part B of the problem asks me to find the velocity at a particular position at y equals 0 0.005, that is halfway from the middle to the top of the channel. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So we start with our very, very nice and clean relationship for velocity. Uh, it really has very few terms in it. One of the beautiful things about dimensionless analysis when you get it right. Very simple expression here. So how would we apply this to find a real velocity? So first thing we have to do is define y tilde, because we need to plug a y tilde in here, for y is 0 0.005. So y tilde is defined as y over h, so that's 0 0.005 divided by the total h, which is 0 0.02. These are both in meters. Obviously, make sure your units are correct. Once they're correct, you get a dimensionless quantity. So once you have a dimensionless quantity, you don't have to worry about units anymore, which is, of course, one of the things I love about this. I plug this value, this is my y tilde, it just goes in there, and that's just going to give me my u tilde. So I get 3 halves, 1 minus 4 times 0 0.25 squared, and that's it. So I plug my plug that into my calculator. Of course, uh, that's equal to uh, 0 0.75, it turns out, times 3 halves. So 3 halves times 0 0.75. And so u tilde is equal to 1.125 with no units. There are no units because this is a dimensionless value. Value, So we have a dimensionless velocity there of 1.125. Now if I want to turn it into a real velocity, I remember that my real velocity is equal to u divided by the average velocity. So my real velocity is the u tilde times the average velocity. Well, I know the average velocity because I just found it a few seconds ago. It was 5 u bar is equal to 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second. So I just take that and I multiply it by 1.125. So u equals 1.125 with no dimensions times 5.95 5.95 times 10 to the minus 3 which is meters per second, which is going to give me a proper velocity. So u, the velocity, is equal to 1.125 times 5.95 e3 negative, which is equal to 6.69 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second. So that's my, sorry, that's my u, not my u bar, my u is equal to 6.69 times 10 3, but it's 1.125 dimensionless times that average velocity. So that's it. So that's that's one of the, you start to see why dimensionless analysis can be sort of nice. This relationship is true for all flows that are at, you know, when you're looking at the flow that's at halfway between the top and the midpoint of the plate, flow between a plate, this is always true. So all you need to do to solve for different flows is plug in your you know, different average velocities and you get the solution very quickly. All right, so there's that. As a final part of this uh, sort of comparison study, we'll take a look at the equations side by side now. So when you're in dimensionless land, we have you know two equations that we used and we also had for dimensioned the same two equations, just, I mean, different equations, but the same, solving for the same thing. So in dimensionless land, we found that dimensionless pressure gradient times the Reynolds number, which is, of course, dimensionless, divided by 12, which is just a number, is equal to 1. And we could solve that either for the Reynolds number or for G to get 1 in terms of the other. In the land of the dimension, we saw that minus the actual pressure gradient times H squared over 12 mu was the relationship. So they're very, very similar. The argument, I say, I would argue for dimensionless analysis is this really shows you an underlying physical phenomenon that the pressure gradient, dimensionless pressure gradient, depends only on the Reynolds number. Or conversely, the Reynolds number depends only on the dimensionless pressure gradient. That's very clear from this relationship. It's nothing like as clear in this relationship. This relationship says that the average velocity depends on the height of the gap, the pressure gradient, and the viscosity. Those are all true things and important things. Um, and it is more explicit here. And so this is easier to use right away because you could plug these numbers in right away and get an answer, which hopefully you're getting good at doing. But this dimensionless analysis reveals an underlying physical phenomenon with the relationship between the dimensionless pressure gradient and the Reynolds number that this one really does not reveal.
The second relationships we came up with were for how you actually find the velocity at a particular point in the flow. In the dimensionless world, this is the equation that does that. It has nothing in it except the dimensionless y variable. There's no other term in it. If you want to find the actual velocity at a particular point, all you need is the dimensionless y to understand the dimensionless quantity here. In the regular dimension world, you see all of the things spelled out. Now, of course, these are, in fact, the same equation. Once you plug in all the, all the terms, we've shown that they come out the same. But you can see, again, it's not nearly as clean. I mean, this is parabolic, as is this. Um, but the relationship between the average flow velocity and the regular velocity aren't here at all. They're not here, they're here because the average flow velocity is baked into the dimensionless term. We can do that for this too. And so one thing we can do is we can say, okay, well, let's rewrite this in terms of the average flow velocity. So we know the average flow velocity from here. So I can use that to plug in for G. So that's what I'm going to do to make these look a little more similar. So I'm going to use this equation, come down here and solve this for G. So I get U bar 12 mu over h squared is what minus g equals, right? So then I'm going to plug that into here. So I have u is equal to, I'll put it as minus 12 mu u bar over h squared, all divided by 2 mu times y squared minus h squared over 4. All right, so what's going to happen here? These mu's are going to cancel each other. Oh, this, what did I do there? Oh, yeah, that's right. This is u bar. So I have u is equal to, obviously, I'm going to get rid of that 12 over 2 and get a 6. So I have negative 6 u bar, and I'm going to put the h squared inside. So I'm going to say, all right, let's do this as uh, here is going to be y squared over h squared, and this is minus 1 over 4, it looks like to me. Yep, that looks fine. And so then obviously I want to flip the minus signs around a little bit. So I want u is equal to u bar times 6 times 1 over 4 minus y over h squared. And finally, I'm going to pull out a 4 from the denominator of this term. So I get u is equal to u bar. 6 over 4 is 3 halves. Uh, I pull out a 4, that's a 1, and I pull out a 4, i got to put a 4 in front of it. So y over h squared. So it looks like that, which of course looks a lot like that. So you can see again, they're, you know, obviously they're the same answer, but this one uh, a little more complicated because it explicitly puts the u bar here. Of course, the y over h is, is the same as y tilde, so they're really the same equation but this is a little cleaner and neater. Um, finally, we'll just remind ourselves what the definitions are over here. This is assuming you've chosen the U bar as your characteristic velocity for the problem. Of course, you've chosen H as your characteristic length scale for the problem. And as we've said, for your dimensionless pressure, you've chosen P over rho U bar squared. So these are the three definitions that have to be used in order to use these two equations. Um, but mostly, um, the dimensional and the dimensionless terms, uh, dimensionless solutions, they both provide the same answers when used correctly. The dimensionless terms tend to provide insight into the underlying physics that the dimensioned terms don't always provide. The dimensionless formulas tend to be easier and cleaner in their dimensionless form, but then turning them into actual solutions is a more lengthy procedure. So it's not that one is necessarily better than the other, uh, but the dimensionless, I like dimensionless because you don't have to worry about units at all until you actually have to apply it to a specific problem. Whereas dimensioned, uh, obviously, you know, at any moment you can, you can get messed up with units. Uh, but, of course, you can mess up units anytime.